is Maridel Santos, and I'm a medical program specialist with Alameda County Social Services. I'm not an eligibility worker. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just present you with just a medical overview. It's, it appears that you know some of the speakers have already may address the issues in regards to um, defining what medical is all about, what affordable health care is all about, uh, what the Obama health care is all about, <laughs> um, Medicare um, in terms of the payment. Uh, what Medicare pays, what it doesn't pay. Um, then we have legal aid here who also assists with the uh, appeals um, issues or um, hearing rights that you may have also. Um, and those hearing rights are also available on the back of your notices of action when you apply for medical programs. Okay? Um, let's see. So I may, may, may go through um, just briefly or just skip the different sections that may already have been addressed. Um, additionally, if nothing else, I do have some good resource um, numbers that you can contact in regards to if you have any type of billing issues or questions as to whether a procedure may be paid or not under the medical program. Alameda County Social Services, when you, when you deal with our agency, we don't deal with billing issues. We do deal only with the medical aspect of eligibility. Okay? So when you do speak to a worker and you try to ask them questions about billing issues, they are not in a position to answer those questions because they are not, they are not familiar with the billing codes or any billing um, eligibility aspect. So they're, okay. So let me go through. Again, this is what Medi-Cal is all about. It's a free or low-cost coverage for California residents. Um, as mentioned before, in 2010, the federal government enacted the Patient Protection Affordable Health Care, also, also known as Health Care Reform or Obamacare. Um, we work closely in conjunction with Covered California, which is the health care exchange. Um, the counties assist with persons' eligibility for Medi-Cal and any subsidies. What is Medi-Cal? The Medi-Cal expansion, um, let's see. so California approved the Medicaid expansion, which is Medi-Cal in California for ch childless, non-disabled adults between the ages of 19 to 64 years old. There was a time when in order to qualify for the Medi-Cal program, you had to be age blind or disabled or be over 65. Now because of um, the expansion of the Medicaid program, as long as your income is below 138% FPL, which is the uh, federal poverty level, um, you qualify for zero share of cost Medi-Cal. I've also attached a chart at the back of your um, the handout that you have. So if you, if you need to know more about what is the 138% FPL, um, let's see. It also applies to the um, to former foster care youth up to age 26 from any state. Now a lot of you may be from, may not may have heard the word magi and are trying to figure out what is magi. So magi is the the, the definition for modified adjusted gross income. Oh, okay. And it's a way of doing budgeting in the Medi-Cal program. Um, it's not a new Medi-Cal program, and there's no asset test under the MAGI determination. It's all based on income. Again, 138% um, income. Um, let's see. Okay, so the asset test is eliminated. So under that program, it doesn't matter what you have anymore. It's what your income. It's all based on income. And... And again, these are the criteria, the eligible population, 19 to 64, children under 19, and pregnant women. So these are the household composition usually. When, when you apply for Medi-Cal under the MAGI household composition, there are three categories that we look at. We look at the tax filer, if you're not claimed as a tax dependent, tax dependents, and not non-tax file, non filers. In California, you need to be able to provide proof of residency and the citizenship or re recent legal immigrants is usually immigration status is usually verified through the federal data hub. Now this is non-MAGI Medi-Cal. When we refer to non-MAGI Medi-Cal, we're referring to if you're age 65 and older. It's a different criteria for determining eligibility under this program. Um, so this program is for the aged, blind, and disabled, and for residents of a long-term care facility. Um, in terms of, uh, let's see, 
under this program, there is an uh, asset test in terms of, uh, unlike, the non, unlike the MAGI program, asset, asset test is eliminated, but with this, there is a limit. So for just an example, for regular medical, for a family budget of one, your, income, your resources cannot exceed 2,000. For a family budget of two, it cannot exceed 3,000. And any additional, 150 for each additional member. Okay. Personal property referred to as cash, bank accounts, credit <laughs> unions, stocks, bonds, um, cash surrender, <coughs> life insurance policy, 401k. And in terms of the life insurance policies, if the policy is not in your name, but you are the better finisher, beneficiary, uh, and someone else is the owner of that policy, that's, you don't have to disclose that to our agency because that's irrelevant. It's only if the policy is also in your name as well as you're the owner. Your primary resident is exempt regardless of the value as well as the, um, your vehicle. If you do have other properties, it's exempt only if the value is 6,000 or less and the net income received from from it is 6% or more from the net market value. Again, for this, if um, the eligibility worker will be the one to make that determination because they have um, a separate form that needs to be um, completed to make that assessment. So that's a discussion you would have with your worker. These are, um, the, in terms of income, I've listed, um, we refer to as wages. For uh, self-employment, aid in kind, unearned income, we've listed social security benefits, unemployment, state disability, veteran benefits, um, child support, alimony, uh, retirement, pension, income, aid in kind. Share of costs. This is just a typical example of how a share of costs is calculated. For example, if your gross income is $1,100 and you're working, we allow a $90 deduction. It's a standard deduction. So you're not, your non-exempt income now becomes $1,010, okay? The maintenance need for one person is only $600 at this time. It has not changed in several years. So then your share of cost will be $410, okay? But your $410 is a monthly share of cost. However, it's not something that you have to pay. It's not a monthly premium. As noted, when there is a share of cost, the medical beneficiary has to pay at out-of-pocket expenses to meet the share of cost before medical pays. The share of cost is to be met in the month in which services are provided. It is not a monthly premium. So as an example, if your bill is um, $300, for example, and your share of cost is $410, you do not pay that $410 because your bill is only $300. Okay. And um, just a note, if you have any unpaid medical bills, to you can also use that to decrease your current or future share of costs, it's, and which is referred to as Hunt versus Kaiser. Uh, these are just additional uh, deductions that's listed also in your um, handout that we allow for the age, blind, or disabled. $20, $20 any income deduction, 65 and a half of earned income, and health insurance premiums. I just, um, on the special programs, just a little background, um, it's limited to coverage to life-sustaining medical treatment. Um, you're, of course, you're required to pay a percentage of the treatment as indicated earlier. Um, and it's limited to individuals in need of kidney dialysis or, or parental hyperalimination treatment, also known as TPN. Uh, we also, it also targets our um, children program, the Quimby program. Qualified Medicare beneficiary, which pays for your Medicare premium. Um, oftentimes, if you are on receipt, you have Medicare Part A, and you're seeking to for assistance to pay for your Part B premium, you would apply through our agency to see whether you qualify for the Part B. Um, and if you don't qualify for Part B through that way, we have the Slim B program, which is the specified low income beneficiary. So just because you're on SSI. Um, you still should apply through our agency for the Quimby program, the Qualified Medicare Pre Beneficiary Program, to see if you qualify for us to be able to assist you to pay that premium. Okay. Um, we have also the Qualified Working Disabled Individual Program, and we have the 250% Working Disabled Program. 
Again, these are also, again, other, um, the TPN programs that we have, the tuberculosis program. Uh, for the special medical programs under dialysis or TPN, as stated earlier, you have to be able to meet all this criteria to be eligible for the program. Uh, <clears throat> again, these are also supplement. Uh, under the eligibility requirement, the first 40,000 of the fair market value of applicants or beneficiaries home is usually exempt. So there are certain criteria also to qualify for through the Medi-Cal program. And for the Medicare application, you must apply for Medicare within 10 days of applying for one of the special programs that we offer through our agency. Resources, um, you can apply for the Medi-Cal program via Covered California by mail or through social services, mybenefitscalwin.org. Okay. You can go in person or by mail at um, Alameda County Social Services. And I've also noted the, the 800 number for Covered California. And these are the different offices that, that's available. We have the Eastmont Sufficiency Center, the Livermore office, Eden, the Hayward office, the North Oakland office, the Enterprise office, and the Fremont office. And they are now also open between the hours of 12 and 1. Okay, so it's open from um, 8, 8.30 to 5 o'clock. And this is a very important um, number that I think that you all should um, uh, make sure that you have this handy. Um, this is the billing department in Sacramento when you call this number. It's 916-636-1980. What this number does is if you say you were to receive uh, a rejection or um, from a provider saying that it's not your, your prescription that you're seeking or the service that you're seeking is not being paid under the medical program, you would need to call this number and they will um, explain to you why or if even the procedure code that's being used is the correct one. Um, make sure that when you do call that you provide the national drug code or procedure code obtained from your pharmacy or the provider. Okay, so this is one of the very um, good numbers to make sure you have handy because oftentimes we receive calls stating that, um, you know, it's not being paid for your bill. Healthcare option is another number to have handy. When you're approved for the Medi-Cal program, you're usually given an option to select a healthcare plan. On the, um, whether it be Alameda Alliance, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, that's a number you would have to call to make that plan selection. It's not th done through our agency. Okay, let me just go back. This is the uh, federal poverty level chart that I was referring to. It's also in your handout. I know, it's, it's, it's small, <laughs> sorry. But it's in, it's in your handout. And you can't read it there, too? Okay. Um, if you need a bigger version, I can also provide that to you. Okay. And this is the explanation of the different um, categories. Where do you find adjusted gross income? Uh, when you're doing the MAGI determination, it's on line four on form 1040 easy, 1040A, line 21, and form 1040, line 37. Okay. And again, these are just common terms that we use. Federal poverty level, legal permanent resident, modified adjusted gross income. The exchange, what it is, CalHERS, retention center, certified enrollment entities and counselors. And that's it. Right. Okay. Thank you.